So uh, I've had some people asking me about my my fence system I have on my table saw. So I just wanted to do a short video just to kind of show what I did. Um, this material here that you can see, this is called Unistrut. And it's uh, basically a steel square tubing without the one side here. So it's open. But um, it's, it's readily available at Home Depot or Lowe's. I just bought a, another piece. They come in 10 foot sections. It's about 20 bucks. And then they have a bunch of different hardware you can get with it. Um, little uh, inserts that go inside with uh, they got a spring on them and it fits in here and then you can run bolts through you know and pretty much put it wherever you want it. So anyway <clears throat> I had a bunch of this at my old shop that whoever was there before me they just they left it there. So I decided, you know, that would work good for a table saw fence. So that's what I used it for. So basically what I did is uh, I got a piece and it's, uh, it extends past the, the tabletop of my saw so that I have more of a, more capacity of cutting. So um, got an L bracket here that uh, I took the old fence off and there's different sets of holes in the end of my table saw. So basically what I did is I took an L bracket here and uh, bolted it to the table saw. It extends out and then I just I can bolt the um, this unistrut railing right to this L bracket. So that holds it here and then uh, I did the same thing on the other end of the table saw here and just bolted it on. And uh, what I did was the holes are pretty big on here for, uh, um, I mean, it's got like holes all along here and they're pretty big. So what I did is I used a smaller bolt. So if you loosen it up, it's sloppy, it'll move around. So um, when I put this on, and then I got my uh, fence system built and put on here and tightened it up, got it all set. And then what I could do is I could just move this on either end, forward or back. And then I was able to adjust the, the fence so that it's 90 degrees to the blade. And then if I ever need to readjust it in the future, I just loosen this up, one end or maybe both ends, depending on what I need to do. And then all I have to do is just shift it, you know, forward or back, just that teeny bit, whatever it takes to square this back up. But I've had this on here for over a year. I set it up initially when I uh, when I put it all together, and it's I haven't had to do anything to it. It's pretty much um, been dead on ever since then. So. Um, but I have the option in the future that if I do need to adjust it, I can. Um, as far as the, the fence itself, what I did here is, uh, got sawdust all over it. So, um, this is also a piece of the, this is what it looks like. Some of them have just round holes and some, some have like an oblong hole. The new piece that I just bought for another project, it's actually kind of the oblong. So um, basically what I did is I got a piece of this, you know, it's, it's longer than the, than the length of the table saw. So it extends out the back and out the front or front and back, whichever way you want to do it. So, um, and then I took a piece of angle iron, this right here. Now, um, if you want to do it the way I did it, it it's going to require some welding. If you have a little buzz box, that will work. If not, um, I suppose you could probably drill holes like across from each other at a you know, kitty corner or whatever and bolt this on. Um, I welded it because I had a welder. But uh, um, 
So anyway, I took this, put, put this on so that it rides against this rail here and uh, welded it on. I squared it all up, clamped it all down, and then welded it. And then I figured I could do the final adjustment, whatever I need with, with this. And then um, I just bought this hasp. It's like two bucks or whatever. And uh, I welded it on to this other end. So when I have it sitting on this rail, when I tighten it, it pushes the, this against the rail so that I don't leave, you know, any indents or anything from clamping it over the, you know, moving it around over the time. <clears throat> so, so the angle iron, it's about, I think it's about 12 inches, 14 inches, something like that. And uh, this hasp I welded on just as a, um, a surface for, the, for it to clamp to instead of right against the rail. And now this piece here, this is a C-clamp that I, I took the threaded part of the C-clamp and I went up, a, it's about an inch or so, and I just ground off, ground the, the threaded part off of the C-clamp, and then I just put it on here and I welded it to, the, um, to this unistrut. And that works as my, I just tighten this up and it clamps against here to hold it in place. Um, so <clears throat> it, it works good. Um, having a lever to just lock it in place would be better than having to turn this, you know. But, you know, if you don't unscrew it too far, just enough to loosen it, it's just, you know, a couple of turns and it's tight. So, um, So I guess it needs some welding because you would have to weld this on. There's no way to bolt this on once you grind it off. You could bolt this on and this on, but I'm sure if you got it all set up, if you don't have a welder, you could take it to a local welding shop and maybe get it done for 20 bucks or something. I, I don't know, but it would probably take them less than 10 minutes just to tack all this together. You know, it doesn't take, it's not like structural, so it doesn't have to be, you know, super heavy-duty welding or anything, just just enough to hold it in place. So, um, anyway, that's pretty much my, my system. One thing I will say that I screwed up on when I, when I did this, so this is something to take into consideration if you decide you want to do this, um... When I put this all together, I <clears throat> ended up having it up too high, and then I basically welded this angle iron right to this unistrut, just right against it. And the problem that I have now with this setup is these uh, these tracks in here for the for like if you have a crosscut sled or any kind of sled, the um, the inserts that go through this groove here. When I pull it back, it hits this because I have it up too high. So if you're going to do something like this, you want to make sure that you have this lower so that it clears the um, the slots for the guides for the for the crosscut sled or whatever you're using. And then on this angle iron, what you're going to have to do is put some kind of a spacer. <laughs> So instead of welding it right to the, the the surface of this, you'll want to get a spacer, whatever whatever um, distance you need for how low this is. So you would just just a, like a square piece of steel or something like that. Um, so you, you you'll want to put that in between here to compensate for how much lower this is. That way, when you do use a crosscut sled or whatever. It'll clear this so you'll be able to pull it back farther. I haven't really had an issue with it because I just moved my um, my uh, can't think of what they're called now. But anyway, the little guide that rides through the track, um, I just I just set it farther forward on the on the um, crosscut sled or whatever I'm, I'm using. So that way I can pull it back farther before it will hit this. So, 
I mean, it, it works fine for me, but that's just a, that's one thing that I, that I messed up on that I wish I would have thought of when I was doing it. So that's my tip to you for if you decide to do this, make sure that you leave this low enough and you compensate with a spacer enough to where if you do have a, a cross cut sled or a miter sled or whatever, whatever you're using on here, that it will clear this when you pull it back. So anyway, that's my, uh, that's my fence system. Um, I, mean, I, I had the materials other than the hasp. I had to buy that. It was a couple bucks. But um, I had all the other stuff, so basically this, this was free. Just my time to do it. So, um, but even if you have to buy everything, you know, it, it, your biggest expense would be the 20 bucks for a 10 foot piece of this, uh, this Unistrut. So, um, anyway, thanks for watching and, uh, I'll see you next time. Oh, don't forget to subscribe.